uh, is screen is visible everyone yes ma'am okay so today we'll see the demo on system verilog okay already we have completed the uh, course on uh, verilog so projects also completed we have discussed the protocol also so from tomorrow onwards we are going to start the system verilog batch right so today we'll see the demo session on the system verilog verification okay so can anyone tell me why we have to use the system verilog for verification why don't we use the verilog for verification okay before going to that uh, we'll recollect the verilog okay uh, can you tell me what are the different data types we have in verilog any wire and reg wire and reg data types and reg data types nothing but net data types and register data types we have right in net data types we have wire w or w and like that whereas in register data types we have reg which is a synthesizable non synthesizable or dollar uh, time and integer real these are the uh, data types for non synthesizable that mean which can be used in the test benches right uh, and can you tell me what is the difference between blocking and non blocking assignments blocking are used for uh, <clears throat> maximum is used for uh, combination circuits and non blocking is used for uh, sequential circuits and uh, blocking is uh, executed sequentially and non blocking is uh, executed as uh, parallelly okay good okay so mainly blocking uh, statements executes who written all these things okay so blocking assignments are mainly used for serial execution when the statement is uh, one statement is executing next statement will be blocked then uh, whenever we are writing within the, within the big end uh, whatever the big end statements are the serial execution statements whereas non blocking also serial execution statements only but we will uh, we will tell those as a concurrent execution that means those are not parallel as well as not serial okay based on the uh, delays it will work as a concurrently the statements will be work serially but it doesn't add the delay to the next statement okay whereas a fork join is the parallel execution statements that means all the delays whatever we are using the delays the delays will execute parallelly that means a uh, minimum delay will execute first and then uh, uh, the delay will be increased like this suppose the uh, 5 10 15 if you take 5 10 15 20 like that uh, the statements will be executed okay suppose if i take 5 2 3 and 10 delays these are the delays and uh, uh, 9 okay can you tell me which statements will be executed first if you use the fork join 2 3 5 9 10 ma'am 2 3 5 9 10 right uh, if you use the blocking assignments which statements will execute first and what is the delay ma'am fork join means what ma'am fork join means uh, see we have two types of blocks okay begin and and fork join okay begin end is the serial execution whatever statements we are writing within the begin end those statements will execute serially whatever blocking assignment or non blocking assignment those statements execute serially by adding its delay okay can you please mute your okay ma'am okay according to the uh, delays they will execute serially but whereas fork join blocks we are using okay fork join or nothing but the statements will execute parallelly parallelly in the sense uh, these are two three delays according to the uh, minimum delay will execute first then it will increment like this whereas a non blocking assignment we will tell those statements will execute parallelly but those statements will like not execute parallelly they will execute serially first five then two then three then nine like this they will execute whereas blocking assignment also execute serially 5 then 5 plus 2 uh, 7 7 plus 3 10 10 plus 10 20 
20 plus 9, 29. These are the delays uh, uh, will be happened in the blocking assignment. Okay. To differentiate blocking and non-blocking assignment, you can write the delays as a intra and the inter assignment delays. Okay. Those things we already discussed in the uh, interview questions, right? How will differentiate the delays in the blocking and non-blocking using intra and the inter. Okay. And coming to the test benches, you already know how we will write the test bench. Can anyone explain how we will connect out, how we will interface the design with the test bench? Instantiation, what instantiation? Suppose I am writing the design code okay dot v code design code this one and here is the test bench okay i need to interface my test bench with the design right then only whatever i am generating the inputs to the variables those variables will connect with this particular design so how can i interface my test bench with the design with the dut with the DUT, right? So here, whatever the design name is there, that design name we are connecting in the test bench. That is called DUT. With the with respect to the signals in the test bench and with respect to the signals in the uh, design, nothing but port list, we are connecting. That is nothing but interface between the design and the test bench in the very log. But where you come to system very log, the total, it will be different. Okay, uh, there we will use some interface, virtual interface concepts like that. That is different. We can discuss later. Okay, so these are the things in Verilog. We are writing the test benches in Verilog also to uh, simulate a design, to verify a design. We have written the programs in uh, many number of test benches for the design. But why still we are moving to the system Verilog? Why we are not using the same Verilog test benches to all the designs? Can you tell me anyone? Why we are moving to the system Verilog? Already we are using the Verilog to write the test benches, right? But still why we are moving to the system Verilog? We can implement the design in the simpler manner. Okay, uh, but a simpler manner means in Verilog we can write only in a single file, but in system Verilog we need to write in a 10 files, 10 type of uh, blocks we need to consider. Is it simple? We have, uh, yes, uh, we have more options available in the system Verilog. Like more... okay. okay, advanced features will be available. Yes. Like, uh, like common Kumar comes, said, some yeah. dynamically okay, yeah. Tell both concept will be used in the system a lot. Like, mm -hmm. we can reuse the mm -hmm. models, okay, okay, good, okay. So, whatever we are writing in the very log, uh, suppose uh, from starting onwards, if we take okay, from starting, what we are writing, module port list generator module, we are writing and we are taking uh, what are the edge and what are the wire inputs and outputs okay so if you are if you want to write the input like if you want to assign some values to the inputs suppose uh, i am generating a fifo okay or yesterday we have seen uh, a uart program okay when we have written for the uart program we just assign some values to the input signals okay so when you are assigning the values if you want to check for 10 different scenarios Okay, you have to assign 10 different values to the signals. 10 number of times you need to write. But without writing 10 number of times, we can simply randomize the value, right? So randomization is the best feature in the system log. Okay, and uh, clocking. Here we will use some clocks, some advanced clocks and connecting with the DUT by using the mode ports. And there is a dynamically structure. Dynamic structure means mainly we are using the class-based verification here. Okay. So these are the many advantages we have. That's why we are moving to the system verilog, which is used for advanced verification. Okay. Uh, from the verilog, there are so many disadvantages. If you want to verify in a IP level, we cannot use the verilog because of its limitations. Okay, that's why we are moving to the system verilog. Okay, 
first we'll see practically in industry how the verification approach will be there okay yes we are the future we are design verification engineer what is our role what we have to do first of all we need we see that thing okay first uh, thing is yesterday we have seen uh, if we want to design a new project or if we want to bring a new feature or anything we have to check with the older version of the project okay what is the older version of the project whether it is ip level or soc level whatever we need to check old version of the project from the project based on the market requirement the design team will bring the additional features which are required additional features or if if there are any unwanted features they will just remove the features and they will bring up one design okay in a architectural level first they will draw the architecture manually according to the teams the design team will uh, uh, develop the code okay the design team will develop the design first okay after developing the design from the design team they will send to the Uh, according to the design team the verification engineers will make one verification plan okay what is the verification plan suppose in a design if you take a soc level or a ip level there will be multiple blocks thousands of blocks will be there in a ip or in a soc okay each block will be assigned to the separate team okay every team will work on a block okay based on that block and based on the specification by uh, whatever given by the design team they will send that uh, they will take that specification and they will make one verification plan okay what is mean by verification plan here suppose uh, here one block is there like a memory block okay from memory block to some processor block is there every block to block connection will be there okay so the memory design engineers or the memory verification engineers whatever the team is there they have to check with the next whatever the individual blocks have connected to that particular team okay whether the signals are meeting or each signal there will be thousands of signals in the each block okay so according to the signals and they will check every signal is meeting its specification or not every signal is working uh, uh, its functionality or not like that they will do the verification plan okay they will suppose uh, uh, in fifo first in first out okay in fifo what we will have just we will have a write pointer signal and a read pointer signal write data read data based on the full and empty signals we will check the operation right like that every signal they will write one a verification plan how it should uh, uh, reach uh, suppose fifo is connecting to the protocol your protocol okay so from this fifo is this signal is uh, connect whatever the signal is connecting maybe this fifo is working as a master here uot is working as a slave here so if fifo is doing the write operation with the uot and uot is doing read operation with some other protocol some other block okay so every signal they will write one verification plan plan is very important once they write the verification plan once they have the verification scenarios they will move to the project manager for the approval why approval maybe they have uh, in place of 10 test cases they have written 20 number of test cases maybe suppose okay uh, which 20 test cases are not necessary we can minimize those test cases into the 10 test cases simply as simply as possible so all the things will check by project manager okay the project manager will check okay whether they have written the verification plan is correct or not whether they are meeting all the specification is correct uh, whether they are meeting all the specification or not okay whether they are meeting the features every feature they are able to check the every feature or not okay everything these things will be checked by project manager okay once project manager approved uh, check all the conditions all the spec okay he he will think okay everything is perfect then he will send the approval okay once project manager has sent the approval there will be deadline okay every team will have the deadline 
like a two months or three months, four months. Okay, according to the deadline, they will have some uh, project uh, milestones. Based on the milestones, they have to reach their test improvement. Okay, so this is the flow. What happens once project manager got the approval? The verific the design engineer will send the to the verification team. Verification team will do the test case development. Okay, whether it is a SOC level or it is a IP level, they will do the test case development. Okay, how they will do test case development based on the signals whatever they are taking and based on the feature whatever they are taking. Okay, based on that, they will develop the test cases. Mainly here, lead engineers, lead engineers or senior engineers will develop the test cases. Okay, and for feature upgrade or design issue, suppose uh, whenever a verification team is doing verification, in middle of that also, uh, they will get some upgrade in the feature. Okay, suppose this feature is required some more update means those things will get from the design engineer again okay so they will always uh, connect with the design engineer integration team like that only okay uh, so uh, they will get day by day approval from the design engineer every time the designs will be changed uh, like uh, new features will come and uh, old features will be removed uh, so day by day that thing will be happen so every time they will approach the design engineers okay and they will check for uh, see after test case development, actually, here we are doing the debugging. Debugging in the sense, if the error is generating, any errors are generating. If the error generate, we need to fix the error. Okay, checks and fix. Mostly test case developers or the senior engineers, debugging will be the uh, like a junior engineers. Checks and fixes will be from uh, uh, like a trainers or internship whoever the students will there, uh, those employees will do these things. Okay, so they always check with the design team. Once uh, everything got finished, verification, suppose in a SOC level, every IP to IP, they will do the verification. Once every IP team has completed their work, they need to check with the coverage. Okay, what is mean by coverage? Coverage is nothing but, nothing but it, it should cover. Coverage is nothing but it should cover overall functionality. You can remember like that. Okay. So there are so many type of blocks will be there. So coverage is nothing but it should coverage. It should cover every functionality in the blocks. Every block, every signal. It's in the signal. There will be thousands of thousands of cover groups or cover points. Cover bins will be there. Okay. So they need to cover all those pins that mean functionality they are checking which signal functionality okay so those things will be uh, taken like that we need to check with the coverage once 100 percent coverage has done means the functionality is ready everything functionality has completed they made the specification they met all the features okay so that pre-silicon verification has done at that point pre-silicon verification is nothing but whatever we are doing the verification there will be post silicon verification also post silicon verification is all that is a separate team we will call as a dft team okay so in post silicon verification what we'll do means first we'll see pre silicon verification okay pre silicon verification means before the manufacturing before it get into the hardware okay we will check uh, every t every ip functionality and we'll do the debugging post silicon means after soc everything hardware everything completed into the hardware we have dumped the design everything has completed one ready made chip got ready Okay, but that time also so many bugs are escaping into the post silicon. Okay, to check the those bugs in the post silicon, we are using the uh, some methods like a DFT team we can call design for debug or DFT team we call. So th there will be so many teams. Okay, so post silicon also we will do the verification. So pre silicon and post silicon verification. This is the verification engineer main role. Did you understood everyone now? Yes, ma'am. Ma'am, could you uh, please repeat that point? What are the pre and post silicon verification? Okay. See, pre silicon is nothing but 
before the manufacturing post silicon is nothing but after the manufacturing pre silicon is nothing but the design whatever we are seeing in the software wise okay post silicon is a hardware in the pre silicon we will check in terms of software in uh, post silicon we will check in terms of hardware hardware means this hardware will be connected to the system computer through the computer only we will do the analysis of that okay did you understood now yeah okay ma'am okay okay have any doubts up to here ma'am once explain assignment and assignment blocks ma'am blocking statements that i can't understand blocking statements <laughs> okay i will explain you later those are very long topics i will explain you later okay okay ma'am thank you ma'am okay okay so introduction to system verilog now we'll see what is mean by system verilog and why we will use the system verilog and what are the advantages of system verilog okay and why system verilog is used for verification rather than verilog we already discussed that in verilog there are so many limitations it doesn't reach the feature wise of uh, ip level if you take ip level or soc level it doesn't meet those requirements okay it is very complexity to do in verilog uh, we we cannot do in a I, at least uh, in a block level not in a ip level we cannot do in a block level okay if you want to do in a block level it has uh, so many disadvantages the, like we cannot check the we cannot do the randomization we cannot make the constraint constraint is nothing but controllability of randomization okay we cannot do that thing and we cannot do the coverage and we cannot do the assertion assertion is nothing but every signal uh, verification whether the signal is doing perfectly or not according to their feature it is working correctly or not these all things we cannot check using the verilog these are the advanced features in the system verilog okay and what is the need of system verilog system verilog is useful for doing the verification of ip blocks okay uh, so it is very easy to uh, to use in a dynamic way which where uh, the interface uh, where uh, the design and test bench are connected in a dynamic manner by using the interface and a virtual interface okay and uh, is a system verilog is synthesizable or not yes S a system verilog is a synthesizable okay we cannot tell it is only used for the test benches only used for the simulation why because in system verilog we have some uh, constructs which are used for synthesis like a always comb uh, like uh, if you want to design a combinational logic circuit you can use as a always comb when you want to design a sequential logic circuit or a flip flops okay like that you can use uh, always ff like that there are some constructs are there we can use for synthesizable okay which are synthesizable those things so when we are going to the uh, in detail uh, topic explanation we can go through all those things so system verilog can be used for synthesis based on its uh, constructs okay have any doubts no doubts okay so these are the system verilog constructs in the sp okay like uh, if you see logic what is mean by logic here if you see in verilog hdl uh, whenever you are using the always block what we will tell always block is the procedural assignment right whereas uh, continuous assignments are assign okay whenever we are using assign as a continuous assignment always block which is a procedural assignment what we will tell output should uh, should be declared with a output should be declared with a wire data type when you are using the always block output should be declared with a reg data type these things we need to follow 
right but in system where log we know in no need to follow these things okay uh, whatever we have did in where log uh, those all are small small uh, blocks okay like a uh, counters or registers or finite state machines so there will be less number of signals so we can see easily what is the wire and what is the reg we can write accordingly but here we are using a ip level or a project level we cannot check every signal what is the input what is the output right so here logic replaces both the procedural and the continuous assignment logic means it can be wire and it can be reg in place of both we are using the logic for the inputs and outputs in the system where log okay and reg is also a data type short int long int byte bit these are other different type of data types in the system where log okay and always comb always ff always latch we can differentiate the flip flop with always ff uh, differentiate the latch with always f latch we can differentiate the combinational with always comb but in where log when you are writing the design for combinational or flip flop or latch or register or counter whatever you are writing only always block right so here we we have different uh, things so it it will be a um, more efficient to generate the design okay and uh, type def type def enum enumerator structure union maybe you have heard in the c language uh, data structures like that right so when we discuss the conceptual wise we can discuss these things these all like uh, enumerator is used to define the uh, variables uh, which are uh, like it assign the number to the variables different variables those things briefly we can discuss when we start the sv and among among which enum will be highly useful for writing the finite state mission because uh, in the finite state mission when we are declaring the states uh, we will declare as a parameter if you remember or not parameter s0 equal to 0 s1 equal to 1 s2 equal to 2 like that uh, we will define the states right so in place of that we can just put the enumerator which assigns the value okay it assigns the uh, 0 1 2 3 4 like that values it will be assigned so that is uh, how it will be used packet structure is also useful and uh, case inside operators of sv replacing case x case z okay we will use the case x case z when you are using a uh, uh, priority encoders or case z when you want to uh, use uh, like a parallel uh, uh, parallel case okay like that uh, we will use these uh, conditions right so that time we can use just a case inside by replacing case x and case z these all are synthesizable and break continue and do while these are used in the system where log whereas we don't have in the where log fork join fork join uh, static task static functions we can use in the system where log in fork join where log in where log we have only fork join but in system where log we have fork join one fork join all fork join any that mean uh, how many number of threads you want to uh, uh, you want to join uh, how many threads you want to execute within the loop like that we can control okay like the packed arrays here we have packed arrays and packed arrays dynamic arrays associative arrays like that so many type of arrays we have but in verilog we have only one type of array which are a static array right so uh, but in system verilog there will be dynamic array why because suppose uh, um i have taken initially as a array size of 5 but after doing the program uh, i want to uh, change this uh, five to some uh, some size i want to improve the array size to the 10 okay uh, as we are using the static arrays in the where log we have to change this five to 10 but in system where log uh, these five we can uh, resize it to the 10 okay how can we resize and all uh, when we discuss the coding we can discuss okay we can resize the array that is nothing but dynamic array associative array is there associative is array nothing but it will take the fras data okay that means suppose i don't know how much data will consume to my code how much size i want to take to my uh, particular functionality i don't know okay when i don't know how much size i need to take 
then i can write the entire program by putting that uh, array in a star okay i can write a overall functionality once the functionality has completed based on its star how much size it occupied okay my functionality how much size it occupied based on that it will assign the size did you got the point that mean after doing the functionality after doing the programming and all we can assign some it automatically assigns the size okay so that is the benefit with the associative array these are the advancements we have in the system where law did you understood everyone have doubts in associative array ma'am okay okay see suppose the dynamic array means what i am telling we can resize the array suppose uh, i have taken this array as a 10 down to 0 okay but uh, uh, after some operation i want to assign some 20 bit data to the array a okay this 10 bit can be resized into the 20 by using dynamic array conditions okay but uh, before i don't know that i am using 20 okay as per dynamic array after resufficient it is not sufficient for me that's why i increased okay but uh, and coming to the advanced level of the i don't know how much size it will take a equal to 20 bit i don't know but i am just assigning a equal to star okay and i am assigning some more data 100 or 1000 whatever okay after the functionality completion it will assign the data it will assign the size here based on how much uh, size it got occupied in your code okay no need to uh, define early no need to define at a starting time after your functionality automatically it will uh, uh, it will assign its a size did you got the point wherever you will use the arrays you can use the dynamic array i mean if you want to change the size of the array we are going to use the dynamic array one yeah maybe like okay. uh, whenever you need to change the size of the array in the middle of the code uh, you can use the dynamic array yeah okay ma'am okay. okay have any doubts anyone ma'am what is enum and struct ma'am enum and struct enum whatever i said uh, like you have used the, in finite state mission you have used uh, parameter declaration like a state declaration right uh, you have assigned some states to the values like that in enum suppose see enum i i want to uh, some red blue or green or otherwise s0 s1 s2 s3 i am putting like this that mean automatically it will assign s0 as a 0 s1 as a 1 s2 as a 2 s3 as a 3 like that it will assign the value number from 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 6 like that it will assign the number so those things uh, when you are using the finite state missions or uh, you are if you are writing any codes like that it will be useful okay i will share you uh, after the when we discuss uh, one by one you will get the examples and all okay thank you ma'am okay so next uh, non synthesizable constructs in the system where log actually all are non synthesizable only because the system where log is used for mainly for test benches right so that's why mostly all are non synthesizable okay all oop related constructs and features are non synthesizable oop related is nothing but it is a object oriented programming whereas in object oriented programming we will use the classes objects like that okay by using the classes what happens uh, what is the advantage we can uh, we can write the code in a dynamic way dynamic way means we can change uh, at any time okay it is not a static in nature it is not static behavior dynamic means uh, we can uh, connect with any 
any uh, block to any block we can uh, uh, like we can uh, we can inherit the classes from one class to another class we can access uh, all the blocks we can access all the components from any class by doing the inheriting like that okay that is dynamic in nature and mailbox mailbox uh, semaphores all these are the concepts okay mailbox i will explain you clearly uh, dynamic and associative arrays i have explained already protected and retrained uh, task and function protected is nothing but here uh, by using the encapsulation and all we can uh, use the protect public private like that okay like that we can protect our data or we can do the public public means anyone can access your uh, data okay just now uh, before only i got a question from a student he asked a question like suppose in a class in a class i am assigning the value a equal to 1 okay uh, with a constraint i am using the constraint with a equal to 1 constraint means it will generate only this value it will randomize only this value okay but uh, this a is writing within the class okay but i want to get the output value as a equal to 5 i want to get output value as a equal to 5 i don't have access to change this class okay as it is in a private i don't have access to change this class so how i will get a equal to 5 can anyone answer by using uh, get method by using uh, inheritance get and set methods as we have studied in the c language get and set methods are used to transmit the data from generator to driver one block to another block okay uh, get and uh, set methods are different here uh, inheritance is uh, maybe some what uh, answer inheritance means suppose uh, to this class not uh, not inheritance uh, for this class we will write the subclass right uh, uh, subclass there will be subclass that means subclass is going to have the properties of the class main class right uh, we don't have the access of public uh, parent class okay but we have the access with the subclass that's how we can change in the subclass subclass override the parent class okay so whenever we are changing in the subclass constraint uh, we can override this value then out at output side we will get a is equal to 5 this a equal to 1 can be override okay so these are somewhat logical questions we'll have okay that's why protected uh, private and public we can use by using the encapsulation and all okay and folk join folk any folk uh, none we already told when we want to uh, when we want to take uh, the traits uh, only uh, like only few traits if you want to connect only few traits after overwriting a parent class also changes yes a parent class value only we are changing right a is declared a equal to one declared in the main class that is parent class okay from the subclass we are overriding that value here we are taking a equal to five constraint here so this a equal to five constraint will override the parent class constraint Did you got the point? I mean, we are going to override the subclass only. We don't want to change the signal in parent class. We are going to override the parent class by using the subclass because uh, we don't have the uh, we don't have access to the parent class as it is a private. We don't have the access to the parent class. We have only access to the subclass so from the subclass we can uh, do we can uh, uh, override the constraint 
actually we have some different types of constraints inline constraint uh, external constraint uh, like that there are so many types of constraints so by using those constraints we can override from the sub uh, chain class i mean we can change the value by overriding the parent class in mm. subclass yes oh, okay okay like that the clocking uh, clocking blocks clocking block is nothing but see when we are uh, there will be so many components in the system below, right so each block to block we have we should have the synchronization uh, suppose uh, when it is uh, transmitting data to the dut okay and uh, whenever it is accessing data from dut both the clock uh, should be in a synchronization a transmitting side receiving side whereas in verlog we will write oh, we will generate only one clock by using always at the rate of uh, something so but here we will have the clocking blocks for more synchronization between driver to interface and uh, interface to monitor like that okay like that the virtual interface i will tell you clearly and more ports more ports also use it to come port connection okay from dut to test bench to connect the ports we will use the mode port which is very uh, efficient way and program blocks virtual functions and virtual task we can discuss uh, like task and functions only but it will have some advanced features and solve before uh, solve uh, solve x solve before that mean uh, something uh, how we can uh, uh, suppose when i am given this uh, actually you want to solve x first then y so when you use this solve x solve uh, before y first y will be executed then x will be executed even it is in the uh, in this uh, way x first then y actually in the serial uh, uh, state execution it will execute first x then y but when you put this solve x before y so it will execute uh, like in this way okay and uh, there are few randomization constraints final blocks initial blocks you already know in the where log okay so these are the different non synthesizable constraints we have constructs we have when we move to the course uh, uh, for each day we will discuss some some things uh, mainly lab sessions also so that time you will get the idea for all okay any doubts ma'am constraint mm -hmm. means what ma'am first of all okay good question okay see so in very long when we are doing the randomization suppose uh, i want to do the randomization for a okay i have declared a as a 3 bit size 3 down to 0 okay and uh, i suppose i want to generate only 50 to 100 number of only 50 to 100 i want to generate the values between 15 to 50 to 100 so that time we can use the constraint otherwise i want to generate the values uh, like uh, 50 to 60 comma 100 to 200 so like this we can use the constraint or suppose uh, when you are writing uh, uh, fifo or whatever uh, protocol write and read operation cannot be done at a time when we said so write operation when write equal to 1 we can write the equations down this is one constraint when write equal to 1 we will perform the write operation when write equal to 0 we can perform the read operations like that uh, constraint is nothing but we are controlling the randomization we are controlling the randomization okay when you do the randomization for a it may randomize any value suppose i am taking a 15 down to 0 15 down to 0 size means it may generate any value between uh, 2 power 15 it may generate any value but we don't need those many cases we just need only 10 cases that to 
between 50 to 100 or 100 to 200. Okay, between that only I need some cases. So in that case, we can use the constraint and we can do the controllability on randomization. Did you got the point? Yes, ma'am. So have any doubts up to here? Ma'am, mm. constraint they given 10, delta 5 they given ma'am. How to verify ma'am? What, what? Const they given constraints as 10, mm. uh, delta symbol like they given 5. Delta 5. Okay. That means we need to randomize between 5 to 10. What is your question? Yes, ma'am. That only, ma'am. That constraint only I asked. Then we need to randomize the variables between 5 to 10. Okay, ma'am. Okay. Okay, ma'am. Yeah. So that is about the constraint. And features on system verilog. Features of system verilog are nothing but whatever we have discussed, class-based verification, object-oriented. What is mean by inheritance? Inheritance is nothing but what, whatever the parent class properties are there, we can access the parent class properties to the subclasses. Why? Because no need to uh, generate again and again. Okay. So that's why we can uh, just inherit from the parent class to the uh, subclass like that. Abstraction. Abstraction is used to use the virtual uh, uh, functions and virtual tasks, which is used for protection. Okay. Polymorphism. Polymorphism means we can write each code in a many ways. Okay. Like uh, how can we write the generator in different ways? Okay. Uh, different way in the sense of multiple number of times, uh, multiple ways we can generate like that encapsulation it is mainly used for public private protect in well in system verilog we have different uh, virtuals also and constraint random verification we have seen mailbox mailbox is mainly used when we are doing the transmission like uh, suppose uh, uh, this is the system verilog architecture we have whenever we are writing the code we will use this uh, test bench uh, architecture Okay, this is the system verilog architecture. This is the generator, which is used to generate the random values. Okay, in verilog, we will assign the input value A equal to something, B equal to something, C equal to something like that, right? Whatever we are doing there, we will randomize those things in the generator. From the generator, we will send to the driver. Through the driver, we will send to the DUT. I will explain everything tomorrow, okay? Already it is nine, right? Tomorrow I will explain you the test or architecture and all. Okay. Up to now today, that is enough. Up to here, did you understood everyone? What is mean by system verilog? What is the advantage of system verilog and features? Hello. Yes, okay, okay. Okay, tomorrow we'll start a uh, system verilog. What is meant by test bench architecture and what are the different components? We'll discuss every component clearly. Um, and from tomorrow we'll start. Uh, first uh, topic is data types, then uh, arrays, then interfaces, module, or whatever we have discussed, all the things uh, one by one will uh, we are going to discuss okay randomization constraints uh, OOP based verification how to write the code for inheritance encapsulation polymorphism and uh, how can we do uh, different type of coverages assertions there are so many subtopics out there everything we can discuss clearly okay have any doubts Ma'am, in Java, encapsulation uh, inheritance are there, ma'am. That mm. only it will be using... Yeah, similar only. Similar in Java, whatever we are using the OOP concept, uh, those are similar only here also. Okay. 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 Okay, tomorrow we'll discuss all these things. What is meant by interface, virtual interface, usage, transactions, mailbox, everything. Okay. Okay, then... Shall I close the session? Okay.
Yes, ma'am. Okay, then. Thanks.